In this video, we're going to take a look at how to get started with the Unity Playground. Unity Playground is a framework to create 2D, physics-based games inside Unity without the need for programming. It has been designed to provide a gentle introduction to Unity for absolute beginners. For this reason, it's very useful for teachers and mentors who want to teach game development, game design or level design. However, the Playground is not meant to be a tool to create complete and commercial games. It is intended as a first stepping stone on a learning path. After making little games with the Playground, you can add to them by using your own graphics, learn how to program and add your custom code, or just start a new project. There are many tutorials on the Learn website that can be a good next step once you feel you have explored the Playground enough. When using the Playground, we assume you have a grasp of Unity basics such as the interface, game objects, components and prefabs. If you need to get started with these, we recommend the interactive tutorials you can find in the editor or in the Unity Hub by going to the Learn tab. You can get the Playground from the Asset Store for free by simply creating a new Unity project, going to the Asset Store and searching for Unity Playground. Because it's a complete project, Unity will ask you to override your settings. Choose Confirm. Once the package has been imported, you will see a group of folders in your project window. The heart of the playground is in the scripts folder. Here you will find more than 30 scripts divided into categories, movement, gameplay and so on. Each of these scripts is a component and performs a very basic action and they are intended to be used in combination with each other to create many types of gameplay. To get an overview of the possibilities the playground offers, you can find some useful images in the documentation folder. They group the scripts into categories and provide a one-line explanation. If you're running a workshop, we provide a PDF that you can print and distribute to the students. The other notable folder is Images, where you will find plenty of graphics to get started with while creating your first game. The folder Prefabs contains some pre-made human characters made with these graphics, but you can also assemble your own. Let's see the playground in action by creating a small space game. Create a new scene. In the project view, navigate to Images, Backgrounds, select BG underscore space and drag it into the hierarchy. This is going to be the background of our game. Before you resize it, change the draw mode on the sprite render component from simple to tiled. Many graphics in the playground support tiling so that you can resize them according to your needs and the pattern will just repeat. Let's also expand visibility options and set the sorting layer to background. This will ensure that this image will always be behind other game elements. Let's now resize the image to fit the whole screen by making sure it covers the grey rectangle that represents the camera view. You can extend it a bit further too. Now navigate to Images, Spaceships, select the one in red and drag it into the hierarchy. This will automatically create a new game object which is going to be our player. Let's now add two scripts to the player to make it move. Click on the Add component in the Inspector and type Push, then select the Push script. As the Push component is added, you will notice that a rigid body 2D is also automatically added. This is because many of the Playground components rely on physics to make things work, and as such, a rigid body 2D is required to allow the spaceship to move. Let's take this chance to zero out the gravity on the rigid body 2D, which we don't need in this case. On the push component, you can now adjust the strength of the push force and the axis. Y is OK in this case. In the scene, a green arrow gizmo visualizes the intensity and the direction of this force. It's now time to press play to test the game. Use this moment to tune the player movement and obtain the speed you desire by tweaking the values of the push strength on the push component and the friction on the rigid body 2D. Just remember that changes made in play mode are not saved, so you will need to type them again once you stop the game. Now add the rotate component to the ship to allow steering. Repeat the procedure as before, then tweak the component's values of speed and angular friction by testing them in play mode. Let's decorate the spaceship by adding a thruster fire. Find it in prefabs, particles. Drag it to the hierarchy 
and parent it to the ship by simply dragging it under the ship's name. Now, the particles will move and rotate with the ship. Before we go any further, let's save our scene and give it a name. You can save it anywhere, provided it's in the Assets folder. Let's tweak the camera. Switch to the Game View, select Main Camera, and tweak the Frame Size option until you like the size of the player's ship on screen. Now let's make the camera follow the player's spaceship. Add the Camera Follow script, or just use the Add Camera Follow button. Finally, drag the spaceship from the hierarchy to the field on the Camera Follow script to assign it. Press play and observe how the camera now follows the player. At this point, if you have used Unity a bit, you might have noticed that many components in the playground have custom, simplified inspectors. This is true for the transform, the camera, and many others, including the headers of game objects. If at any point you want to regain full control, you can choose Playground, Turn Playground Off, and the original inspectors will be displayed. You can then toggle between the two modes at any time. This functionality is intended for more advanced users. Let's now add some obstacles to our scene for the player to navigate around and avoid. Choose an image of an asteroid from the folder Images Asteroids in the project view and drag it into the hierarchy. Add the rigid body to D, set the gravity to zero and the friction to one. This will ensure that the asteroid doesn't drift forever if touched, but it will stop after a short distance. Now to allow the player and the rock to interact, let's add the Polygon Collider 2D to both. Polygon colliders are handy because they will automatically build the collision shape based on your graphics. When we hit play, we will be able to see that the rock and the player can now collide and push each other. To make the rock a real obstacle, let's introduce the concept of player health. Add the health system attribute component to the spaceship game object. This will keep track of its health starting from 3. Add the modify health attribute to the asteroid. This will make it so that when it collides with the player, it will subtract one unit of health. To visualize the health value, choose the user interface prefab from the prefabs folder and drag it to the scene. This pre-made UI will display values for health and score and allows us to define the winning conditions of our game. By default, the player wins the game if they manage to score 5 points. To make the system work, we need one more step. Select the player's spaceship and change the tag to player. Many scripts in the Unity Playground rely on tags to know which object is which. In this case, the UI needs to know which object it needs to display the health of. Tagging the spaceship as the player also allows the game to go into its game over state if the player's health goes to zero, or to assign points if this ship shoots the asteroids. Test the game by pressing play. We will see now that a collision hurts the player, and if repeated, the game over text is displayed on screen. Let's give our spaceship a way to get rid of the obstacles. Navigate to Images, Projectiles, and drag Laser Mid from the project view into the hierarchy. Add a Capsule Collider 2D component, choose Vertical as the direction, and then tweak its size until it looks good. Also add the Rigid Body 2D to allow it to move, and as we have done for the other Rigid Body 2D components, zero out the gravity. This is enough to make it move and interact with the physics system. An important step is also to mark the collider as a trigger. Trigger colliders are used when you need to detect when two objects touch or intersect each other, without them actually applying a push or resistance. In this case, we don't want the laser to push things. We will need to make this laser a prefab so that we can spawn instances or copies of it while the game is running. Before we do this, let's add the bullet attribute. This is a simple script which keeps track of who has shot the laser. So in the case of a two-player game, the game will know who to assign points to. Basically, this script will keep track of who this laser projectile belongs to. Now, make the laser into a prefab by dragging it into the project window. This is now ready to be instantiated at runtime in multiple copies. Once it's stored as a prefab, 
we can delete the instance in the scene since we are done editing it. Now we want to create a location at which our laser projectiles will be spawned. Select the ship, create an empty object, let's also give it a sensible name, and add the object shooter script. The reason why we make this an empty object is so that we can easily move the object afterwards to control where the lasers are shot from. In fact, let's move this object to the tip of the ship. On the object shooter script, set a reference to the prefab you just created by dragging it from the project window to the field called prefab to spawn. Feel free to tweak the values of the variables to your liking. The shoot direction is a vector, so we want to set it to 0 on the x and 1 on the y to aim in a direction pointing up relative to the ship. Finally, add the script destroy for points attribute to the asteroid. This will allow the asteroid to be destroyed on collision with a bullet. However, let's set its value to zero because the ultimate goal of this game is not to destroy asteroids, so we don't want the player to get points for doing it. Press play to test the game. You can now blast away asteroids. Because Playground is so flexible, at this point we could turn this game into anything. We could make it a dogfight game for two players, make it a precision space flight game, or even a space racing game. Let's turn this game into a rescue mission by placing some aliens that are drifting into space and the player needs to retrieve them by touching them with a spaceship. From images, creatures, Get the green alien and drag it to the hierarchy. Add the Polygon Collider 2D and mark it as a trigger. Because we want to make it look like it's drifting in space, add an auto-rotate component to the alien and zero out the gravity on the rigid body 2D that gets automatically added. Now, add the collectable attribute script to it. This script will make it so that when the object is touched, the player receives a point and the object is also removed from the scene. Press play to test that the behavior works. At this point, you have all the mechanics in place and it's just a matter of designing the level. Once you are satisfied with your gameplay values that you have chosen in the inspector while in edit mode, drag both the alien and the asteroid into the project view to make them prefabs. Then duplicate them and move them around to form a playable level and add a bit of a challenge to it. You can have fun by adding auto-move and auto-rotate scripts to the asteroids to spice things up. An important thing we like to stress about the playground is that, as the name implies, what you create with it is up to you. If you're running a workshop, it's good to remind the students and push them gently to try new things, rather than copying existing game ideas. A good trick is to fuse two existing simple games into one to get something new. In this short video, we made a very simple game, but Playground has a lot more to offer. To discover all of its possibilities, check the cheat sheets. To learn more, take a look at the Getting Started document in the documentation folder. The reference guide also contains an in-depth explanation of all the scripts and how they interact with each other. The example folders contain six pre-made games, each one of them showing different genres and creative solutions. If you create something with Unity Playground or use it to teach, let us know by sharing it on Twitter with the hashtag Unity Playground. In the description box for this video, we've included a link to download the Unity Playground and also linked to a number of other helpful resources to help you learn how to make games in Unity.